Well, good evening and welcome everybody to Queen's Club in West London for our coverage of tonight's 2023 Sir John Ripblatt British Open singles final. Giles Doy uh, taking us through, uh, well myself, I'm Giles Doy, taking us through the next half hour or so before the singles final gets underway at 6pm. I'm fan absolutely delighted to have uh, Nick Howe and Josh Smith joining me as well. Uh, gents, good evening, welcome. Evening Giles, thanks for having us. Yeah, hi Giles, hi everyone at home, thanks for having us. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're going to spend uh, a little bit of time um, in uh, outside here. We've got uh, obviously got the courts uh, in cloaked in darkness uh, on this quite cold uh, November evening, and we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, before the singles final, uh, just doing a little bit of a review and a recap of what we've seen here at Queens Club um, over the last eight or nine days or so. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the the, the fantastic uh, experience that some of our juniors have had. Uh, or some of the junior uh, me uh, players have had. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about some of the uh, sort of rank world ranking sort of number ten to ten to twenty, uh, and how how they've done throughout the tournament as well. Uh, and reflect a little bit about some of the uh, maybe some of the names that um, we haven't uh, maybe we haven't seen uh, in the singles draw uh, this year as well. Uh, we'll then spend a bit of time uh, with a, an interview uh, with Camden Riviere. Um, reflecting a little bit on some of his time, uh, his experiences of the World Championships, uh, obviously culminating recently in, uh, in his successful defence in Washington uh, not that long ago. And then, of course, uh, previewing and looking forward to what we're going to have uh, tonight with Camden Riviere and John Lumley in the singles final. Uh, so, gents, so we'll, we'll start talking about uh, the rise of some of the juniors that we've had uh, going through the qualifying uh, and also through the main draw as well. Uh, so just to give a, a couple of different names. Uh, so um, Henry Henman uh, having a, a fantastic uh, uh, couple of doubles matches uh, and also uh, making some good strides during, during the qualifying as well. Um, Ollie Pridmore um, beating, uh, beating Claire Fay and coming up, uh, coming up against John Lumley in the round of 16. Um, Will Flynn uh, coming, part, coming through Zach Edel uh, in our first match in the main draw here uh, in a quite a brutal five-set match actually first thing on the first thing on Sunday uh, and also uh, Bertie Vallett um, as well um, defeating John Woods Casey uh, and then again coming up against Steve Vagona in the round of 16. Um, Josh a lot of names I've just covered just there who has impressed you the most um, from sort of the junior uh, part of the draw? Thanks Charles yeah so I think Firstly, the most important thing really is that we're having lots to talk about. Um, I think that's not always something that is the case with real tennis and in, and in sports in general. You kind of go through feats and famine and good generations. And when I came into the game 10 years ago, there weren't as many names coming through. It was a talk, talking point amongst the game. And um, in the last 10 years, we've, we've had a lot of... Um, a lot of support come to those young players and I think we're seeing the benefits of that. So overall, I think it's a, a really good sign for the future. Um, personally, I'd never seen Oli Pridmore play. Um, I had the pleasure of being on court with some, some of those other guys. I had Will on court with me last year and <laughs> I know I can attest to how difficult he is to play. Um, but I'd never seen Oli, Oli play and I like what he does out there. I think he looks comfortable, so I enjoyed watching him. He obviously came up against a tough John Lumley, but had a great win against Claire, so that was a bit of a standout for me there. Fantastic, yeah, and I think certainly looking back at uh, what we saw, uh, certainly at the beginning of the, you know John's match against um, Oli Pridmore, um, really kind of standing up to John for the first kind of few games in that match, um, really quite impressive stuff to see. Uh, definitely worth uh, watching back again. Nick, what what do you think? Uh, what do you think these folks are going to gain from the experiences they've had? To obviously, British Open is a is a wider entry, twenty four uh, entries instead of instead of sixteen. What what are these what are these uh, what are these young folks going to take away from from their time here? I mean, uh, it's just a huge thing to be able to qualify for British Open. It's sort of the biggest event, open event on the calendar, as you have twenty four uh, players with four people trying to qualify. Uh, you've got to be at least a fifteen handicap, I believe, or better, just to get in qualifying. So to get through qualifying, you've got to be a good player. And then to go on and, and get to compete in front of a, a good crowd, being at you know, the prestigious Queen's Club, uh, it's just a fantastic experience to deal with that sort of pressure on the biggest stage. Everything's streamed live, people seeing your game, people are critiquing. Um, so to get, gain that experience so early on is just going to be invaluable for them moving forward. So 
it's exciting for them. Yeah, I think we've, we're, we're like you say, Josh, really blessed with a, a fantastic generation of, of, of players. You know, uh, about about to make this, make about to make their place on the on the main stage. A question for both of you guys: um, We've obviously seen, uh, seen seen these guys improve uh, in, in massively uh, over the last kind of week or so. How do we how do we keep them there? How do we keep these guys getting the exposure and the competition at this kind of this kind of level? Who wants to go um, first? I'll, ju- I'll you, can, you can go first. Jump in. It's yeah. about the only time I might be able to take something off Nicky. Um, <laughs> so uh, for me, I think what's really nice to see is all these young players are hungry. They've got passion and they've got determination. For me, that is the kind of key element from their side. And then I think each of the governing bodies need to make sure they have systems, good systems in place to make sure that the support is there, um, that they're getting on court, they're getting access to the top players, the top advice. And I think that combination for me is, is the key thing. Uh, the combination of that passion and then the systems to help make the, to help cultivate them into top players. I mean, uh, if I can add a little bit while they're amateurs and improving, if they can sort of follow the lead of the USCTA. I mean, the USCTA uh, they won the uh, uh, what's it, the Clovia Cup uh, for the first time, being the British. It has 30 courts, so uh, I think the organisations get, getting behind their young stars and helping support them and incentivise them to go play tournaments. Uh, I think that'll be a key to keeping them keeping their hunger up as well. Amazing stuff. Yeah, definitely uh, an exciting generation uh, of, of tennis players yet to come. Um, we'll, 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 f- we'll dwell a little bit more, kind of changing tack on some of the other matches. So thinking a little bit about some of the players in the sort of top 10 to top, sort of between 10 and 20 in the um, in the world rankings. Again, we've had some fantastic performances um, over the last kind of couple of weeks or so, just to, to mention a, a, a couple. Um, Levi Gale taking uh, Ben Taylor Matthews uh, to three love up in the fifth set um, in their uh, round of 16 match. Um, Nino Marola um, able to uh, take uh, a set off Camden Riviere, first time I think in 15 years. Uh, a player above scratch was able to take a, a set off Camden Riviere. Uh, very, uh, very impressive achievement. Um, and also, I will uh, appreciating uh, current company. Um, Darren Long, uh, very difficult match uh, against yourself, uh, Nick, in, in, in the round of 16. Um, and also uh, Rob Schenkman as uh, the only unseeded uh, player to make the quarterfinals um, and beating Leon Smart quite convincingly, I'd say, probably in, in four sets uh, on, on quarterfinal Thursday. Um, so thinking all about all of that, uh, I'm coming, to, coming to you, Josh. How We've had some really tight matches over, you know, o- over, over uh, the last week or so. Does that does that mean this kind of the, the world top twenty is kind of wide open? How how open how competitive is is that kind of second tier of players, which obviously you find yourself in um, at the moment? Yeah, I think I think that's a great question, and and I'm sort of I'm sort of fifty fifty on it really. I think you're looking for you know if you lose three love, three one or three two loss is a step in the right direction. You know, and and we've seen that a lot this week we've seen a lot of close games perhaps closer than they would have been in previous years and if we look at some of the names on those lists Schenkman, Gale, Marola I think it's very fair to say that all of those guys are playing better this year than they were last year so they're they're clearly still developing. Um, The other side of the coin I think at the end of the day as well though Tennis is a results business, wins and losses. You know, and three two and three love go down the same on on the tournament sheet. And um, so Schenkman's result against Smart stands out for me as as the one non-seeded player to get through. And and I think those players would then, in the next few years, look to try and change those close losses to to close victories. So the the signs are really bright. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and and so Nick, for yourself. Uh, you know, you're one of the players in the top eight. Um, you know, we're going to start seeing uh, Rob Fay, Chris Chapman starting to fall down the rankings a little bit, and we'll, we'll dwell on that in 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 a, in a moment or two. So, I guess from your perspective, uh, who do you see as the next players who are going to come into that top eight position? Who 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 are you who are you most worried by? Uh, good question. <laughs> worried. Um, <laughs> don't look, to be honest, too far behind me. Um, but players coming through, as as you said, there's been. There's a, a quite a few matches I think that have been missed here in the British Open. Is I've never seen so many five sets mm-hmm. go on. Josh himself w- was two sets to love. Up against Lewis had another heartbreaker, <laughs> uh, and there was a couple of Zach and Will Flynn. Um, 
where we were put in an unprecedented situation the first day where Bryn and Lewis ended up to avoid going on at like 12.30 at night <laughs> playing on the, w on the West Court. So uh, yeah, this year's been closer than ever. So it's hard to say who, 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 who will pop through. Um, but y yeah, I mean, I guess you could say Shankman, he's improving all the time. But uh, yeah, so it makes the top players, we've definitely got to be wary and keep working. But uh, I, was, I was happy to scrape through. It's been a long year with eliminators, I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> don't have a heap of energy left at the end of this year. <laughs> we might uh, might come back to that in a little bit, um, if that's all right, Nick. So um, thank you, thank you, gents, for those. So just under 20 minutes to go before, uh, before final begins at, at six o'clock. We'll move on to a couple of uh, different talking points now. Um, and so I, I guess it'd be great to get your guys' reflections about a couple of players whose names uh, are absent from the, the singles draw. Um, so we obviously had the news uh, at the start of this week uh, of Chris Chapman, uh, previous, uh, previous finalist here at Queen's, announcing his retirement from international, uh, from international play. Um, Chris, I'm oh, sorry, Chris, Josh. Uh, Josh, you uh, obviously know Chris very well. Uh, you've trained with Chris. You lived next door to Chris for a number of years. Um, you, must be, you must be sad to, to hear of Chris's announcement. Um, you must be hit sad to hear of his, uh, his announcement. And um, do you have any kind of particular memories of, of, of maybe Chris here or, uh, or, or elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the good things I've got to say about Chappers would last much longer than ha half an hour. So um, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. But um, obviously mixed feelings for me. But um, I was fortunate enough, you know, Chappers and I are, uh, are so close, as you rightly said. We basically lived together for six or seven years there. Um, and just give a shout out to everyone down under, especially the Chapman family. Look forward to seeing you guys. Um, but I spoke to Chappers before the announcement was made and it was great to speak to him on the phone and it was really clear that when we were on the phone together, this was the right decision. And I could feel that when we were talking. So, you know, firstly, um, I'm really happy for him and, and, and his family. You know, Chappers has had an amazing career, multiple open winner, no one can ever take that away from him. Um, so he can he can retire with his head held high for sure. I think for the for the game of real tennis, you know, Chris is tremendously respected. He's a true professional in every sense. I was all I was always inspired by the way he, he handled his business on and off the court. I think we've lost a really good professional in that sense. And he also bought a particular brand of real tennis that I'll miss seeing, carving the balls around and smashing his main wall dead ons. And um, personally. Obviously, Chris and I were very close. Um, he was the reason I started trying to get better at the game. Um, we were, he's my, been my closest companion, so it's strange to have him not uh, not be here. But hopefully he doesn't go too far away because he was basically my de facto travel advisor, and I've not got any better at that, so I definitely need him to not go too far away. So, uh, And I can certainly confirm, uh, having known you for a number of years, Josh, <laughs> that your, your, travel, uh, your, your travel sense is absolutely horrific. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we'll, we'll also um, move moving on very swiftly from that. Um, this is also coming up to the, the first year of Rob Fay announcing his retirement from uh, from singles play as well. Um, and, and Nick, you are obviously Rob's uh, doubles partner. You'll be uh, uh, with him tomorrow in the doubles final. Um, over the last 12 months, have you noticed anything different in kind of Rob's kind of approach or character or maybe what he's doing? Uh, well... Uh the difference in terms of he's definitely more club focused on running the oratory um but with chappers retiring and also rob two big names that have you know two big draw cards for people coming to watch certainly missed and they're both great people to have on tour super funny super fun to be around so we miss that uh selfishly it's a little bit easier not having them two go in the tournament um so i think that helped my last tournament where i was able to win the french open not having those two there um and and then also selfishly he's a little bit fresher in the doubles he hasn't normally played a final so i'm glad going into mo tomorrow he's not played any singles <laughs> but yeah yeah I, I i recall some of his uh uh some of the recovery time that requires required him in the singles was yeah. was quite was quite lengthy so um obviously best of luck uh for for tomorrow night's doubles um as well um, so talking about uh, talking about tomorrow's doubles uh, final and also our, our singles match coming up, we'll switch across now to uh, our main uh, draw for for tonight's singles match, Camden Riviere against John Lumley. Um, 
so world number one, current uh, world champion Camden Riviere, uh, sat down with uh, the TNRA media god of Ben Gatenbeek uh, earlier this year and uh, shared, a, shared a few words about uh, certainly his experiences of the, the world championships over the last few years or so. Let's, uh, let's hear what Cam's got to say. So 2016, you're playing world championship at, at Newport. Mm -hmm. You've played a couple by this point, but now you're playing in the US uh, at, at the time uh, a relatively uh, familiar court. Yes. <laughs> um, was that, going into that tournament, how different was it? Was there a different vibe, um, being having a bit more crowd support than you perhaps would have gotten in Melbourne and so on? Uh, definitely. I mean, having one in the US, that was a first for me in general, regardless of, of home court. And, um, you know, playing, I would say that yet again, that 2014 one, the crowd that year was very aggressive and very aggressively against me. And it kind of felt like it can't get any worse than that. That's as bad of a crowd as I'm ever gonna have to deal with. So just knowing it was in the US, I felt like I was gonna have not more, you know, I wasn't gonna have the majority, but I at least felt like it wasn't going to be, you know, 90, 10 or something like that. I think we had maybe five, six people in, in the Melbourne one. What was the feeling like hitting that final point and becoming world champion? Oh gosh, it was, I, I don't think I honestly remember it. It was one of those moments where you feel like you're watching it from the outside. And um, you also don't believe it's gonna happen because you've lost so many, especially me, uh, having lost so many world championships. And so you just like, you know, going into it, you're just trying to block it out. I think it was something like 40-15 to chase better than three or something like that. And uh, in your mind, you know it's match point, you know you have all the momentum, there's no reason for you to lose from this point. And I, yet again, I've won opens, I've done all these things, it's the one thing I haven't done. And in the back of your mind, you're like, this just, he's gonna hit, you know, great cup volley and uh, it's not over. And so when he didn't, when he, when he hit it long, you just, you couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. And uh, it was definitely the culmination of a, a very long journey, a very up and down journey and, um, you know, to, ha to have it in the U.S. and to have have most of my family there um, was was pretty incredible. That was... A lot of athletes talk about after they've reached the highs, if they're playing Olympics, if they've won Olympic gold, mm -hmm. or whatever the, the case may be, that the feeling in the months afterwards can be a bit of a down. Was that the case for you? Or... Oh no, it definitely was. Um, there's a great documentary uh, that I think Michael Phelps put together called The Weight of Gold. And it talks about the how Olympic athletes and you finish and you win a gold medal and then you go straight back to work and you know no one knows who you are and life doesn't change all these things and for me that was 100 percent the case i thought you know i looked at rob and i idolized him in this position of world champion and i thought it was going to be this big life-changing event and things were going to be different and uh, it just it wasn't the case and i would say that tw from 2016 to 2018 was definitely a snowball of of kind of not depression but depressing thoughts and and kind of this world not necessarily being what i wanted it to be and not the changes and all these these kind of ridiculous ideals that you put on it that that in, were never going to be true but in your mind you've convinced yourself um and so that was it was a bit it was a bit tough just um unfortunately having to leave newport which i really really did not want to do uh and still dealing with uh, a bunch of personal stuff and it was just you, I thought if I won, all of it would go away and, you know, all that, and it just wasn't the case. And Did you feel that pressure going into the 2018 match then? I would say yes. I mean, I got, I'll be honest. I knew when Rob caught, got into the Eliminators, he decided to play. You kind of know he's the heavy favorite to, to make it. I thought it was either going to be Bryn or Rob. I thought Bryn had an amazing match with him here and, and really pushed him. But you kind of, I knew Rob was most likely going to be the challenger. And... So, you know, the pressure was that now you've established yourself as world champion and you want to prove that, you want to continue to prove it. And this is your first opportunity. But it's also my first time not going through the Eliminators, uh, which is a very, very different uh, experience as I learned that year. And so I didn't realize how much I had relied on them to get me ready. So that was a big, big learning moment for myself. And I think, um, you know, yet again, there's because of the nature of this game and, and, and kind of the dominance that I've had, there were very few things I hadn't experienced in this game at that point. And so 
defending my world championship was the the one final thing and so it's the one unknown and so you know unfortunately for me i think the unknowns have tended to not go well for me but once i know them i think i do much better with them and so it was an unfortunate result you know one bad day cost me cost me the world championship and if you know for honest i hadn't had a bad day in close to seven years or something at that point and so you know everybody's allowed to have one i just chose a really really bad day to have mine <laughs> so that that 2022 world championship press it is a place where rob had worked for for a number of years by that point the crowd was very boisterous yeah. at, at Preston. Um, the match itself got uh, a bit feisty and fiery. <laughs> um, how much did you want it at that point? Uh, what was it like going up against all of that leading up to that, that match? You, I mean, as soon as it was Preston, I knew, I knew what was coming. The, we had had the World Doubles Championship there. Uh, a few years back and Tim and I had managed to, to come back and win that and so I knew what I was getting into in that one so there was a lot of mental preparation for that uh, to get ready because yet again in Melbourne it had been very similar and that had been a big struggle so I put a lot of time and effort into getting ready for that and uh, being able to channel it and in the old days maybe it would have thrown me off but I used it as motivation you know, the cheering against me, the, the loud, boisterous crowd, the, the situations that arose, you know, whether for or against me that, that transpired and, and led the match down this like kind of storybook road, uh, they, they all had to become fuel for me uh, to win the match because it felt like I was playing against an army, not just, not just one person. So in the past few years, you formed a, a very close friendship with, with John Lumley. <laughs> training partners for a while you've you get on really well like you get on with, with Tim um, what's it been like going against him now in the world championship last year I imagine it's very much what Tim was experiencing with me I think Tim took me under his wing and really helped me develop my game and uh, I think I you know or I'd like to think I've helped John develop his um, and it's been amazing to see how well he's playing and it's 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 so interesting because when I watch him play I'm so happy for him I'm happy to see him competing and winning and doing all these great things, but at the same time, now he's he's one of the the biggest rivals and biggest you know competition. Um, but it, it, at the end of the day, I, I try to treat it very much like I do with Tim. You know, when we're on court, I want to win. Uh, and when the minute that match ends, if he beats me, if I beat him, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're we're very good friends, and, and I enjoy spending time with him. And and I'm just you know I'm happy for him to have, have gained the success he has in the game and. I think he's got a, a great future ahead of him, and I, you know, I hope to hold him off for for a while. But at the end of the day, I also think that if he were to to beat me, say in two years, that you know, I don't think the game could ask for a much better person in there. You know, uh, fascinating interview there by Camden Rivier, uh, and there's a, a full. Uh, full version of that interview will go live on the TNRA YouTube channel uh, a little bit later this week uh, once uh, once everything has died down from the action taking place here. Um, we could spend a lot of time uh, dwelling on some of the things that Cam uh, has said in that interview, um, but uh, we won't in the in <laughs> we won't in the interest of time. I guess one thing that uh, one thing that Cam does talk about quite a bit. Uh, during some of those uh, during some of those world championship challenges he talks a lot about the importance of using the eliminators as a way of getting yourself match fit match ready uh, for the kind of the best of 13 Nick you've gone through that process you know this year how how have you found that kind of process between sort of the best of five that you'd normally get uh, you get here versus the kind of best of nine best of 13 yeah I mean it's it's a really different situation that you're going into in terms of like a best of five, you're just going in to win a match, but with a best of nine or best of 13, you're going in with a game plan to try and like just take as many sets as you can. And at the end of that first day, you got to realize if you're up or you're down, the match isn't over. So it's really important to stay. Every set is just as important as a previous set to keep fighting. And then once you got through that day one, you reassess what's the game plan for the, for the next day, whether you've won or lost. Um, so yeah, I just found it, uh, you know, it's a long process as well, uh, but yeah, it was it was a great great experience to be part of. And once you go through sort of that eliminator and that pressure, 
uh, it does make it a little bit easier for the other tournaments. So that's the biggest thing I found. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So I think we've both got both the players coming onto court now uh, and starting to get themselves ready and warm themselves up for uh, for the final. Uh, which hopefully, we'll be getting underway in a few moments' time. Let's quickly uh, just remind ourselves of how both the players got uh, to uh, to the final. Uh, so Camden Riviere. Uh, we'll start. We'll start with him. Um, so, Josh, I'll, I'll come to you. So, uh, a, 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 you know, we've already talked about his match against Nino in the round of 16, um, but he also uh, he also had uh, maybe maybe a little bit of a maybe a bit of an injury concern maybe in the quarterfinals as well. We've we've seen a bit of a leg brace kind of being used a couple of times. Yeah. So, um, for the first match, you know. The curse of Camden's travel issues continues. It's a uh, it's a long running thing for for Camden, and his his flight on Sunday night was cancelled. So he ended up flying in on Tuesday morning to play Nino uh, in the afternoon. Nino's been playing really well. Credit credit to him. That's a uh, great to take a, a, a set off Cam there. But I can imagine Cam was a bit bleary eyed at that stage going on going on late that day. And he's obviously got a niggle of of some kind, but. Um, one of the things that's always so impressive about champions of any sport is finding ways to win. And um, I was watching Cam and Steve from the winning gallery, actually, and you know it was clear in the first first set that Cam wasn't quite firing on all cylinders and, and need to get going a bit. And S Steve's not a player you want to really give any chance to get momentum. Um, I remember Cam being four one down in in the second there and. It was impressive from that point, you know, finding a way to step up to a, another gear, and from that point was just v virtually flawless. And and Cam's clearly, you know, despite what niggles he might be carrying, he's clearly trending in the right direction, which is exactly what you want coming into a final. Absolutely, and I think just before we 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 stop for a moment to think about the semi-finals, um, Nick for for John actually probably. Uh, probably a, a very different kind of uh, early rounds for, uh, for, for for John Lumley coming up against Oli Pridmore to begin with, and then Matcha uh, Salong in in the round of 16. It's seemingly kind of not not quite needing to get into the higher gears during those two matches. Well, no, I mean John's a super talented player, um, number two in the world for a reason. It would have been the first time seeing him again come up against Oli, someone who's probably maybe even quicker than him on a court, but. <laughs> who likes to retrieve everything, but obviously John does it, you know, a, a lot better than Ollie at the moment. Um, but I'm sure he would have enjoyed that. That would have been a good way for John to get his eye in. And then from there, once you've got that first match under the way, that first match nerves, uh, yeah, he just, uh, he really took it to Ma Mathieu Salon. Uh, I mean, I did see some of it. Mathieu played well at, in parts, but uh, John, you know, had an answer for everything Mathieu threw at him. So he was just too good in those two matches. Yeah, it certainly seemed uh, in that fir in that first quarter final match, uh, John Lumley very much trying to play Mathieu Salong at Mathieu Salong's game um, and uh, and getting through. Uh, I think he was on court only just about an hour or so um, in in that first kind of quarter final. Or so we then come moving on to the semi finals, um, which we'll cover very briefly. Uh, Nick, do you want to talk about your semi final, or we can uh, we can skip that in the interest of time? Well. Well, we can talk. I mean, it was always going to be a tall order coming up against the world champ. He's been the best player in our game for a number of years. Uh, I did find myself in a position to take a set, which I've not done before. I found myself 5-3, 40-15 up, and I think Cam realised, like, you're not taking a set with me <laughs> yet. So before I knew it, I blinked. It was 6-5. Uh, but I was happy with the next two sets. Cam was just that bit better, but it was competitive, and, you know, I was pleased with the way I played. Um, and the big thing is I couldn't believe how well he could serve. He, I've never been tied up like that. Um, so, he, I mean, he just really shows that he has every weapon in his arsenal when he needs it. And he can, if something else is not working, he'll find it, he'll find another weapon, which is something I find incredibly impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we'll also uh, talk about the, as uh, so we've got some of uh, Camden's stats on the on the screen just there uh, for you now, although the, certainly the, the stats certainly speak for themselves uh, in terms of uh, where Camden has been uh, in the game and is currently is currently at the moment. Um, and then Josh, the second uh, semi-final, uh, Bryn Sayers versus John Lumley, uh, an absolutely brutally long, uh, incredibly tight uh, semi-final. What did you, what did you make of both players? Yeah, I mean, what an awesome match that was. Um, and John and 
John and Bryn have a have a sort of little bit of a history of having good matches. They had a really decent match at the Champions Trophy as well. Um, one of the things that when John came out for the World Champs, I was, he just looked so fit, so sharp, and you know, despite that brutal match, look, looked like he hardly kind of lost a step through those three days. And that was another thing that's impressed me this this week is he just he just looks so sharp he's just in such good condition and you can't help but think that was a big factor in a in a long match like that Bryn in the doubles looked like he was carrying some sort of niggle I don't know if that came came out of the singles but you know if anyone wants to understand the importance of combining you know true skill shot making ability retrieval ability with the the top level conditioning I mean John's a, just the great example there. So t brutal match, but um, you just can't, you know, I, I had Lummers winning a little bit easier in, in that match, but you just can't, you can't look past Bryn at Queens. He's an incredible player, serves so well, knows this court like, like the back of his hand and, and so dangerous out of that backhand, backhand corner. You know, those, it's great for, just great for everyone to be able to watch matches like that. Yeah, uh, we really, we really cannot underestimate uh, Bryn's uh, superiority at, uh, at at this club. Uh, certainly, the the accuracy he's able to get, particularly on some of the high serves, which uh, he was able to get to make work really, really effectively against uh, Ben Taylor Matthews in the quarterfinal. Um, that was that was something that was really, uh, really quite impressive to watch. So, looking ahead to uh, to, to tonight's final. Um, it's a currently a 15, 15 to one um, uh, victory uh, in Camden's favour. I think John's uh, John's only victory against Camden coming up. I think in the national league match in the US uh, a couple of years ago. First time uh, actually both players have met um, at Queens as well. I guess question for for both of you guys. We know that John uh, is able to take uh, is able to take sets off Camden, um, but I guess what what do you think is going to happen tonight? What's uh, what, what's your prediction? Go ahead. Uh, well, it's going to be an exciting match. John's going to be uh, confident because, as you said, he's taken sets. I mean, technically not won a match, but did win the second day in the in the uh, final uh, in the World Championship, three sets to one. So, you know, he'll be going in with a lot of belief. It's the first time they've played each other since that match. Um, so, yeah, Cam's Cam's going to be up against it, and I'm excited to watch it. Josh, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, going to be a great match. You're looking at two of kind of the best athletes in terms of kind of speed and conditioning. I think we're going to have some amazing rallies. Both of these guys are unbelievable retrievers. So it's going to, you know, it's going to push the, the tension up there. Um, I think, I think John is going to make it really tough for Cam. I'm expecting tight sets throughout. It's hard for me to, you know, if I had to put my money down on it. It's hard for me to bet against the world champs. I, th I think Cam's going to going to do it, but we're going to be treated to matches like this for a, for a good while to come. Fantastic. Thank you very much, gents. Uh, we've got uh, Drew Lyons, uh, who's about to announce both the players uh, for the final. So that brings us to the end of our coverage here outside uh, Queen's Club. We'll head straight inside uh, for coverage of the Sir John Whitblack British Open final 2023. Your commentary team are Ben Ronaldson and Chris Ronaldson. Thank you for joining us. Well, greetings from the commentary box. I'm here, my name's Chris Ronaldson, with my son Ben, who's the head pro at Queen's. John going in with his usual railroad to start with. I'm quite intrigued to see what Camden serves this time there. Well, the railroads have been acting a little differently at Queen's this week due to the high humidity.
by which you mean the railroad has been coming back into the side wall more. Yeah, which is not a normal thing you see at Queen, so that it's been used far more by the top players. Well, you have to adapt to the conditions. But I was surprised to see Camden serving a fast railroad to Nicky Howe. That must be the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Classically, the problem when you're serving at this high level is that if you serve short, people are going to play a cut volley. If you serve deep, they're going to play a force, often a main wall force. So you have to decide which of those two evils you prefer. Here we go. Looks like a railroad. Another shot. 40, 15. Gallery, 40, 15. Well, Ben, so far the railroads haven't been come back into the side wall. I think they will. Um, it, certainly on Saturday when Bryn was playing uh, semi final. He's finding the ball cutting into the court uh, a lot more. He's actually struggling on his own court to, to um, get to grips with that. But they were really sliding down that side wall. So how old are these balls? How many hours have these been played with? That's a complex question. So we have three sets of 67 balls for this tournament and by the time you get to the semis and the finals we start mixing the better sets together, the better remaining balls. Game to the receiver, first game. Some relatively creative play from Camden from the server side, hitting both round behind John. of John's is uh, an area he's been working very hard on for the last couple of years. That seems to come out a bit straighter than usual. Yeah. Again, that's the humidity, is it? Camden doesn't hit it right. <laughs> Good dig out from John on that back end. feeling each other out I think yeah haven't really got into the match yet so you've trained both of these two of all the people here you are most proud of them <laughs> I'm enormously proud of both of them no dad that was a trick question I'm standing right next to you <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> John Lumley started with me in 2010 and his father started with me in Melbourne 35 years earlier 
no doubt Colin will be there on the sidelines, ready to tell John what he's done right and wrong at the end of the match. Have a game. held that nicely, didn't he? I mean, Camden just loves to hit the inside of that timbre. Just missed the timbre on the inside. effort. That, that is a shot we don't see from counter very often. The fat boost from the back end in there when it's actually not necessary. Like the rescue boast when he's diving into the corner, but but actively choosing to do it. Yeah, it wasn't really a rescue shot then, was it? Yeah, it was an option. So that's twice we've seen Camden elect to boast the ball into John's forehand. Difficult shot to play a boast when the ball's coming towards you. Relatively easy off the back wall. Oh. Fifteen forty. It's great that he's looking for that. Game receiver, two games to one. Yeah, John getting in a little bit of trouble with that uh, Demi PK when he's overhitting it, allowing Camden to turn. Camden holding the ball very well there, leaving the decision to the last minute. Makes it very difficult for John. Supreme effort to reach that ball from John, though. Yeah. So it'll be nice thing that Camden's going to... He's not somebody who tends to change his game plan with the service too much. So he's gone out there, decided the rare is the best option. It's probably not moving as much as it has been. Chase two. And then or he serves this bubble from very wide, something he started doing out in Preston for the World Championships and worked very well from out there because of the slidey glass back wall. And so he serves a full pico. Chase one and two. That's a good shot. Very easily done. Well, it is easily done, but is it really necessary to have a marker calling the faults from underneath the penthouse? Second 
gallery. Fifteen oh. I mean, Easy half volley off the back wall. I think Camden doesn't want to run quite as hard because he'd rather try and take that on the volley than chase it to bed on the door. Yeah, I'd, I'd normally pitch on to reach that ball. Bit of a late read. It's no secret that Camden's feeling his aches and pains more and more as the years go past. Well, I don't, I don't think he'd mind now that we've reached the final, this knowledge being out there, but Camden has a grade three adductor tear. And that is a uh, pretty serious grade four surgery. He's been nursing it. He's got um, strappings, and we saw him earlier on doing some pretty grotesque exercises to keep himself in shape. That was, are you going to be traumatized having seen that? No, I'll live. I'll okay. Live. So how much longer do you think he'll keep playing? Uh, six years and one month. I'll write that down. Hmm. Everyone likes to play at Christmas. Ooh. Uh, speaking to Camden earlier. You know, he feels like he's playing as well as he's ever played. It's just, you know, he wants to keep his body in shape. And funny enough, his best ever handicap was last year. Controlling that rally well. Yeah. It's worth pointing out these two are good friends, and you're never going to see a straight force from the hazards to get these two against each other. I mean, seriously, you had to do it then. <laughs> His foot was on the line. Certainly wasn't a hard one. We've had two slightly unusual mistakes from Camden this game. That snatch volley is certainly one. Yeah. Business-like, isn't he, John? Oh, ruthlessly efficient. Great hair. Bad bounce? Probably bad ball. I don't know it makes this rubbish. <laughs> there are a couple of cracks on the Queen's floor around worse than three, which make for dramatic changes in trajectory. I've heard the forehand corners 
making a bit more problem than usual. Yeah. So the, the courts haven't actually been repainted for 12 years. We're waiting for the roof to be redone next year before we do that. And as you'd know from taking paint off the floors, it's actually a significant layer of you know, uh, material that you bring up. So if there are undulations in the floor, paint does a fair amount to even that out. And as the paint winds down, uh, winds, uh, as the paint winds down, the undulations become more apparent. So Queens is worth the slight uh, resurfacing soon. Beverly, 40 Love, Hazard, second gallery. That's a great play. John kept the pressure on nicely there. So again, Camden going. What's the problem here? Going for a big burst. So there are a few. When it's raining outside, you do occasionally get drips of water dropping down and hazard the door, and a little bit in the very centre of the court at the back of the, at the back. Um, normally, it's, it's not much. Well, we're going to have a slight intermission here before Just we. Just two seconds. Drew. Drew. Drew, there's a towel at the back by the back door there. The general consensus of all the people I've been speaking to is this has been the most interesting uh, British Open for years and years. <coughs> and I think that's partly because of the excellent streaming. <coughs> been done by Ben Gatenbeek and his team. Mm. <coughs> but I think it's also partly because for the first time in years we've had a few sort of breakthrough performances. Yeah. And uh, we've had uh, we've had Levi Gale taking Ben Matthews to five sets. Yeah, three love up in the final set. We've had Bertie Vallat beating John Woods Casey, another young chap. He's just turned 18 on the 5th of November, managing to get through the first round of British Open, which was astounding. We've got Ollie Pridmore. Yeah. I think Henry Hedman showed his worth in that doubles. Yeah, played fantastically well there. And Nino Marola certainly played in a way which surprised most people. Almost took a set off Cam. 6-5 <laughs> in the first. Isn't that right? He won it. Oh, he won the first set. Cam has only dropped two sets in this tournament, singles and doubles, and Nino's won them both. I just stole it from him. Sorry, Nino. These players both pretty experienced, they handle this sort of intermission. Amazing retrieving. <laughs> Must be quite a culture shock for Camden having spent so many years chasing Rob around to suddenly be the chap at the top who everyone's shooting at. I know it's been true that he's been number one for a long time, but he no longer has to play Rob in singles. 
and so he no longer has to worry about serving long railroads and having his head taken off. Yeah, and Nicky Howe hits a heavy ball these days. I think I think his head is still a target. Ben, Ben Tiamassi managed to duck under three balls going well underneath the dead on yesterday. And the game. What does it say about Ben? Super Not a big guy. It's only three to three. We have three two. Three two. We've reached a new world here. If anyone wants to rewind the streaming and to let us know what the... <laughs> Camden went 40 love up in that game. John clawed it back. It's taken a long time, including the intermission, but it is only 3-2. Um, I think uh, Drew's senility is finally kicking in, isn't it? Or us. <laughs> You're pretty sure it's 3-2, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Camden went 40 love up. <laughs> All sorted out very amicably. Camden asking if they could restart the game. Okay, He's like... Oh dear. That's oh a that's beautiful lovely, shot, yeah. isn't it? Just beautiful. Could have been anything. Could have been a force. That's such a difficult shot to play. Getting the height right and the length. Yeah, and he's getting a lot of traction against John with the post. Yeah, I mean, John knows he's not getting that railroad tight enough at the moment. Which is why he's been serving a bunch of other stuff as well. That's a great serve. Great serve yeah. That'll encourage him to do that. It's interesting because in the World Champions, he served almost entirely railroads. He's not sending that high serve as high as some of the other pros do, but both of them are challenge counter. So 
So John's come out for the long haul. He's brought four rackets with him. I notice Camden's only got three. Jet black, wayward rackets. Look good, don't they? Black strings, black That's racket. That's why this is the greatest game in the world. Fantastic control by John there, keeping that ball going. It's a good shot from John. He drops really low as he hits that. really trying to move Cam side to side and, and it's working. Even that winning gallery that Camden hit, you know, it was, it was more of a dig out that happened to go in than um, John had worked the point pretty well. Obviously deciding to go corner to corner against Cam. seen Camden try and do that before? He didn't have much options, it was so tight that serve. Looks as if the drips on the roof have affected uh, Ben Gatenbeek as well. We no longer have a point score on the board. We're trying to restore that right now. There's no way to talk about the players. <laughs> yeah, that's great control. Okay. Camden's always claimed that he doesn't really mind what racket he's using. He's used the original Harrow's Waywards Gold Leafs.
You do get used to what you have, don't you? There it is again. Yeah. So, a couple of the top players actually shade the insides of the frames. Did you say you've got the twins? Too cute down the line from Camden there. John taking advantage of it. So Camden has never suffered from a deductor tear until recently. The only thing that's changed in Camden's life is um, he's got married, got a lovely young wife. I'm just saying. <laughs> The fact that they enjoyed getting married so much, they're, uh, they're getting again. married again next year yes. in Hungary. Yes, I'm planning to be there. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh. Yes. Luckily, Camden's happy with just a dog. <laughs> Seven leads, 40 30, chasing yard. And again, three games for four. A bit casual from John there, I thought. You know, might have kicked back a bit. It's a good serve. Brilliant. I thought John did really well that point. He, he worked the point really nicely. He yeah. just missed the opportunity when it came. Would have won the point against anybody else several times. That high serve just going a little too low, not yeah. really challenging. Like From the where others. we're standing, we could see that serve was eight feet short of the, of the rafters. I should say nine, but fine. Getting a good replay here. Good heavy ball from John there. Yeah. Yeah, good serve from Cameron. Forced to boast. Thirty fifteen. 
Camden, uh, sorry, John checks his grip, doesn't he, before every point. Good angle. Yeah, I think that first one was meant for the galleries. You know, John's lost a couple of points in the row, probably thinking to try and get this side, this point. That's one way to try and do it. I mean, typically when people are trying to get a chase to hit hard, low cross court, back wall first, galleries or the heavy boast, but the heavy boast against Cam is risky. Oh, that's a blow, isn't it? I can picture Colin pointing at the galleries right now. Oh, shut. That row didn't go back at all. Yeah, but the way Camden surfeits, he, he gets an early bounce in the penthouse and then many more bounces. It, by the time it reaches the back hall, it should be moving a lot less than most other people's railroads, right? So yeah, but that's when he's trying to serve onto people's volley. Last gallery. So John starts off the rally at the serve, returning serve with a short grip, but then he lengthens as the rally goes on. D didn't you do that as well? Yeah. Especially this end, actually. John. Yeah, it's a great point from John, actually. Very aggressive off the timbre on that volley as well. Great rest, and that brings up set point for Camden Revere. I'm surprised these two have never met at Queens before. Hmm. Well, I know I know Bryn drew uh, Camden for like 18 months <laughs> straight, <laughs> so that might have stopped some of it. Um. And John doesn't didn't have a great record up until about four years ago in this event because he losing to Nicky Howe quite a lot. Yeah, and Camden did skip the occasional British as well. Yeah. Didn't Here we go, set point. Oh. That's, that's a crazy good backhand from Camden there. He, he's he's able to take that ball at a remarkable height at any point before or afterwards that after that height so it's quite hard to tell when he's going to pull the trigger. Yeah. Second set level. Another great Another serve. Great serve. Yeah. own medicine there. Both of them utilising that short sidewall serve. Yeah, but you, uh, you should never half volley the serve, should you? Well, Well, in 2018, 15, 30. 
You remember how well Camden used the side walls of our road against Rob in yeah, day on two. The third day, on third day. Third day, sorry, you're right, he lost day two. What was it? Day three. Won ten games in a row with it. But he kept going with it and Rob eventually worked out the answer to a certain extent. Whereas here we're seeing him doing the side wall and the straight one, which means John can't move up quick enough. to miss the dead on there. Lovely shot from John. Oh. As has been game, said game. often, uh, these two played the World Championship in two months ago in Washington. And in that match, John served almost exclusively railroads. And his espoused tactic was to keep the ball on Camden's backhand. But I haven't noticed that today. Bit of a nothing shot from Camden there. Yeah, I think he was shaking the sweat from his eyes, seemingly. Hmm. The last few timbers, Tom, uh, John's hit have been very aggressive. starting to become quite a service dominated match in which case we'll start to see more galleries Two games at the hazard end for yep. Camden. And maybe telling because Camden was looking for the chase on that last shot. Last gallery. That serve within six inches of the roof. Matters less with one chase, but uh, beginning a game though. What percentage of uh, points do you reckon 
has a chase as a one from the receiver side with these guys. Well, I'm sure Ben can produce that stat, can't he? There we go, there's pressure. I don't think it's high in this match. I, mean, I can think of a couple that weren't won by the receiver. Toe strokes, chase the last gallery. Guys are so good at putting that one away, aren't they? Slightly overran that one. Well, actually, I think unusually Camden telegraphed the boast quite early, and John was right on at that time. So John making the choice to run up and tackle that cyborg railroad that's going for the going for the line on the volley. Feeling Cam's not hitting quite so many drills down the line as he has done in the past. Do you know what I mean? Normally, good percentage of the balls he digs out here just make their way in there, and there yep. very few of them. Oh, we've got some stats for the sets. Yep, that's what I counted. Four girls to one for John? Yeah, well, for Camden. Sorry, for Camden, yes. And a service domination, as you referred to. Chase the last gallery. Yeah, this is a pretty useful lead, you know? Yeah. The very edge just coming. Extra. 20 degrees further back there. Hmm. That was a heavy ball, wasn't it? Yeah. Rip that. Camden trying to get himself going for the set. First here. Ben says we're going to get a whole load of gallery chases. Wow. Canada's movement seems to be all right, doesn't it? It is. It's, it, I don't think it's quite what it was that five years ago, though. Worse than a yard. Yeah. Camp 
pick that for one and two. Chase the door. So did I. <laughs> Easy now. It's not 30 low. 15 all. Fifteen all. What does it? What do you have? Oh, okay. It's your right. It's fifteen all. Now we've got to be careful because this is the kind of thing that will upset Camden more than John. Yes, John's wonderfully phlegmatic, isn't he? Yeah. Very unfazed. Camden shaking his head now. I mean, there's many reasons that Rob came out and blasted Camden off the off the court in, in 2018. Did some amazing forcing and stuff like that. But there was a period of time where Camden let things get to him a little bit. And he's as you say, John, cool as a cucumber. Remarkably good anticipation from Camden there. Still shaking his head there. Side wall, that, that, that ball went ahead, didn't it? Four dead on each. that will make now that Camden's so fired up. Think of that um, heavy attack side wall serve from John there. Oh. 
I like it when Let's people go. vary their serves. I think any serve almost is a good serve if you do it occasionally. Amazing of that, isn't it? It's, it's really interesting to see just how hard John is attacking the timbre. It's like he knows that Cam can move across an intercept. He just hits through. I think he was going for the grill there. You think so? Yeah. Just yeah. John's preferred shot when he gets the sitter is to go for the grill. I don't know. I could never hit the bloody thing. Five minutes ago, John led the dead on count 4 1. It's now 4 8. Uh, 4 9. Um, <coughs> it's, uh, it's ever since Camden got a bit angry. He can often go the other way. This is. Yeah. Another great serve. Hmm. He'll hold it. Just seeing a replay of this amazing rally here. Nope, that wasn't it, it was the force. So I believe 15, 40, last gallery. Three love to three all in fairly short order. Yeah. Have you seen Penny here this evening? I have, yes. Penny wouldn't miss a show like this. <laughs> Camden punished there for missing the timbre. So we've got Colin here, former Australian Open champion, John's father, Penny, former world champion for many, many years. Do you know how many years Penny was world champion? She won it on six occasions and you hold it for two years at a time, so effectively 12 years, yeah. Tara will probably be here too. She was former world ladies number two, probably number three now. Lovely family, pretty impressive. You kind of failed with your offspring, didn't you? I tried. Yeah. Mm. Second 
great head. Right along gallery. the See, I think that's a significant change with John's game. He really attacks those backhand volleys now. He tries to really get some chunk in them instead of just trying to get them back. Made right? a big difference. John looking for the main wall force there. I think John's actually getting himself in good positions with that railroad. When it, when it goes in right, can force to take an incredibly high volley on two occasions there. Yeah. The second one gets over, but John's in good position. Better than half a yard. Brilliant play. Great cut volume, great force. Yeah. And Camden picked it out too, it's just too perfect. Lovely shot from John. That is the length to go for when that side bore over right there. A bit really short. Well, he put in the extra footwork to get the right side of the ball. a step short of that half volley drive. Mm. Just a bit of control. Brilliant footwork by both of them. Yep, had a few net calls from Cam the last couple of games. That high server Cam's actually is getting higher than I remember he used to hit it. He's challenging the lights a little bit more than in years gone by. Of course, if you're going to serve this railroad, you need to have the defense of the main wall force to back it up. And that's what part of the reason. If you serve it deep. If you serve it deep. And, and Cam's double-handed, well, his backhand volley is good enough to control that ball down the line for the loose ones. Well, this is a big point. Serving for a 5-3 lead. Defending better than two. Oh, oh 
bottom edge of the dead on. Very awkward ball John had to take there. He's teeming with spin from Camden's return. A sensible shot. Right. So, Dad, if this match does go to five, who's your money on for the fifth? If who's my money on? If it goes to a fifth. Light's going to go out at 10.45 again. Oh, gosh. something to see John get his double-handed back and volley over the top of that ball that's that high. It always looks an awkward shot but it's very effective isn't it? Well yes normally. Going for that back end volley, isn't he? Yep. 15, Bit lucky to get away with a very low high serve there. Camden missed the target. Wow. That pretty clean, didn't he? <coughs> Unusual sort of situation this for Camden because for what fifteen years he's been the fittest player on the circuit. Mm. And now he isn't. Yep. I've seen John Romney in the gym. Two. It's uh, it's quite a scary thing. Yeah, he likes to train naked, doesn't he? <laughs> And the game, four games to five. Good job. Oh, that really grubbed along the ground, didn't it? Bit of a short bubble, to be fair. That's the kind of length Camden's trying to get with this bobble. A bit more for an arc, forcing the boost. Yes, get it up near that side wall. There is actually a plank up against the side wall which runs flat, where certain bobbles can actually just find a groove and, and drop at the right point, but uh, a lot of the top players not opting to go for that option. John a slightly more predictable player than Camden. He plays shots one might predict more often. Plays it very well, mind. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd say it's slightly. Uh, 
That's a short bobble as well, isn't it? No, there isn't a player in the, in the top eight who's not going to really put you under pressure if, if that bobble doesn't get near the back wall. Yeah, but also the number of bounces affected, and both those last two are three bounce bobbles. It's very much easier to read them when it's actually bobbling. Just for the listeners, as opposed to bobbling or bouncing West instead of bobbling. Two. Bouncing instead of bobbling. Technical terms. Yeah. For the cognoscente, you'll grow into it. <laughs> we'll have a fight. And Nina Morol is not, no longer the only person who's taken a set off Camden. should be doing that more often. He's had a lot of traction with it. Yeah. Queens is a little unforgiving with, with that timbre in terms of that corner mm. and down the line. There's not much the Camden can't get. It must be pretty flush. Yeah. A square corner, just like that ball now. <laughs> Play John. Uh, just a bit straight, wasn't it? Did well from there, it's a little off balance. Interestingly, Camden reasonably thought that ball was a fault, but actually it just took okay, a really bad bounce off the last plank of the penthouse. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it hit the edge, but it's reasonable for Camden to assume that kind of lurch shouldn't happen normally. Take that from there. Yeah. So. I know John's playing well here, but I've got to say, I, I pet Camden to get those balls out of the grill more often in the last three or four. Made slight errors with. Oh, here we go. There's a comment coming from Cam. Yep, there it is. Mm. <laughs> You've got to get those things out of your head. Yeah, making reference to that last game. But a slight problem playing it's left is you send a loose hard ball underneath the grill you can get in a bit of trouble mm. particularly with playing Steve Vigona as well oh yeah oh yes that's clever <laughs> That's 
that's actually yeah. a very good shot from there. Yeah. I think one of the things that changed that since John got those three sets on the second day at the World Championship, I think it's destroyed Camden's sense of invisibility, or rather, the sense of invisibility that he had. Yeah. Uh, John goes into the match feeling he has a real chance each time now. Yeah, and he's got a you know incredible self-belief as well, as all top players do. hard there but he seems to regenerate with just one shoulder stroke What a brilliant rest. Yeah. Came and had to end that way. But John's speed to intercept those balls before the back wall on three occasions was phenomenal. As the second gallery, no stroke. I know when you're back at the top you tried to hit the main wall tambo clip get the ball around behind them and, and these days Camden's going for the inside tambo do you still have a view on that one I think he varies it but I think Camden's That's theory the is when you hit inside tambo even if they read that they're playing a ball from very deep well it says here that Camden's 10 two up and dead ons, but it was 13-5 recently. So it's just set two. I oh, bigger problem, yeah. set two, yeah. That's an amazing stat for That's one set then, isn't it? Ten yeah. dead ons and a losing set. I think seven of them came in the first three points after he got annoyed. <laughs> Love, chase one and two. It's quite low. Yeah. 
punished. Yep. It's amazing the difference that extra couple of meters makes to how much they can attack that ball. Lovely control by John. 15, 40. It's a fantastic spectacle, this, isn't it? Yeah. Got that base back that time. Back from love 40 to 30, 40. That was a pretty chunky force from Cam. And he wound up for that one. Interesting, he didn't choose to play the main ball off that last one, just took the hazard instead. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the great respect, these guys' friends, as we mentioned, not forcing from the hazards, but um, quite often what can happen is the other person knows, like, main wall's one of the only good options available to you, and they, they just look to cover that, and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble when so you're that far up. Yeah. It's a pretty awkward one, too. say that's almost Camden's signature shot, yep. his cushioned volley. Yeah, takes the pace off it, can't get off the back wall, have to make intercepts, way too far to go. John scrambling desperately, but eventually Camden finds his winner. Clean up. Camden did a great get on the third point of that third shot of that rally. Ooh, he was in control there as well. Mm. Pretty good. Forty love. Oh. Nice to see Camden taking that last one in good humour. So we've had a couple of really old guys in the doubles draw. What have you made of their play so far? Are we talking about Tim and Rob here? Yeah. Well, uh, Tim is more injured than he usually is. Uh, I mean, he's had, had his two knee operations, I think it was three and a half years ago, something like that. And um, I know when he came back out after that, played against Ben Taylor Matthews, having won a round earlier, he said, oh, my knees are great. It's just the rest of my body. Um, but, you know, I think he might be making Camden do a, a little bit more work, but his falling is phenomenal. I think they've both been fantastic. Yeah. Actually, Rob in the semis yesterday. Oh, it's a great cat. Oh, I'll play, John. Rob steamed up to the second gallery and tried to do a 
crazy reaction volley and, and uh, just missed unusually. Half a yard worse than last gallery, Jim. And he said, who do you think, I, who do you, think you are, Tim Chisholm? He shouted. it. <laughs> So in, in the doubles, Rob and Nicky beat Bryn Sayers and Ben Taylor Matthews and um, at the 5-2 in the first set, Rob was kind of blowing quite hard and I thought, you know, is there a, a bit, by the end of the match he looked fine. Um, so I was thinking, oh, you know, has he lost a little bit of conditioning, which he obviously should have done. I mean, there's no way he could be training to the level he was this time last year, but um, yeah, he, he, he was great. And Rob's remarkable in a lot of ways, but his lack of injuries over his career has been phenomenal. He had one British Open he was injured in the final, but apart from that, I can't really think of one. That's a good point from him. Serves advantage. Case worse than two. Well, Rob does have pretty <laughs> terrible plantar fasciitis, and uh, he finds the pain quite a lot to deal with. And there's no chance for him to rest, being the head pro at Oratory, giving lessons. Oh, that's well oh. held. Well, yeah. well, he was pretty always, always pretty good at keeping yeah. his injuries from his opponents. See how many bounces you get on this bubble. That's yeah, more like it. That's who you want, isn't it? Five. Get right up. well to dig that boast out Camden doesn't normally have to give himself normally gives himself a better option but didn't quite get there fast enough I don't really notice a decline in his speed across the court I think he's a little bit slower up and down yeah than there was that um, when he didn't reach a half yard yeah. worse than the last Himself missing that gallery there. Yeah, we had two galleries to aim for as well. Well, you never used to aim for the gallery, so you always had a specific gallery in mind when you're going for a shot, right? Yeah, but if you're playing worse than second hazard, you, you probably okay. aim for the post, don't you? I can't see that far. Almost a perfect demi peak and that gets punished like that. Fourteen six, dead on. Ooh, good try. Three great, great gets from John there. Two backhands and one defence. That's too low. Yeah, that high forehand volley cams. Yeah, you said he's missed it a few times.
Yeah, late on that. Well, I think he always meant to boast it, but I think he overcooked it. Oh, that's a funny one. For those of you watching the screen, that came off the bottom edge of the dead on and went into the last gallery. I suppose even if you weren't watching on the screen, it went off the bottom yeah, edge of the dead on into the last yeah. gallery. Yeah. I actually had to re-zip tie that entire last gallery because the top player has been nailing it and the net netting was falling off. And there's a ruling that if you clip the netting on the way past, it goes in the Beverly second gallery instead of the last. So, nearly a yard worse yes. Than last gallery. Gosh, what a return! and trying to hit just a few inches above the penthouse with that serve, so occasionally it's going to clip the penthouse first. That's very good. You see, that's the ball I'm talking about there, the first Camden backhand up against the main wall. You see that ball go in the grill a lot more often, and, you know, he's kind of spraying it out a bit. But level there's no point in hitting the timbre at that pace they're going to read it right every time aren't they yeah i feel like john's hurrying his return of camden's railroad just a fraction too much off the back wall a bit of a strange bounce there but the one before just ever so slightly snatching at it when it's not as tight that one there just that backhand cross court Got it just right, didn't he? So this look, look at here. this footwork. Look at this footwork. See, I would say that ball of cams normally is going to make it into the grill a bit more often. Maybe he's trying to take the pace off it, I don't know. But you're right, cams still fast sideways. Mm. <laughs> Should be punished. It's mm. lucky to get away with that, sir. Cam opting for the soft option. Unlike that one, for instance. Advantage receiver. Four games to one. So Camden got control of this match again. Well, the instant Camden went 2 1 up, he started um, smiling again. Which is not unusual, but.
haven't been that many high serves going out, have there? I think this can be a little bit telling. So and I haven't, can't well, remember. The height's a little bit overrated, isn't it, for that serve? The important thing is to get the, the length absolutely right. And then you want to get within five feet of the ceiling, but you don't need to be within a foot, do you? I kind of feel like if you're aiming for a point and you're aiming for a height and you go too low, it's short by virtue of you underhitting it. Yep. any change in strategy John should be employing at this point. Well, I certainly don't think there's any point in trying to rally with Canton. I mean, there was a s if you're trying to run him around and get him tired, that's one thing, but I think you've got to go for your winners. Disparity in the dead on count has been quite remarkable. I just feel like Cam has got a lot more comfortable with that high serve in the last three or four years. So you marked the first semi-final of the doubles on s yesterday. How difficult is it to mark for these guys these days? To mark for them? Yeah. Well, all doubles is now marked from the dead on. Um, all the players are very gracious about calling hazards, um, not ups and all that kind of stuff. You can obviously see the service line better. Um, I think they're incredibly well behaved. Didn't have to give any warnings. Is that what you're referring to? <laughs> Camden looking much more settled now. Everyone's commented what a wonderful streaming service Ben Gaten ah, it's great. provided. But one of the things I've enjoyed especially is the variety of commentators. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because they've all got different styles. And no one knows what they're talking about, but it just brings a new voice to the game. Mm -hmm. no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no strokes, worse than the yard. Had to tell Camden off at the beginning of this tournament for wearing a logo for Wayward Rackets, the size of my bottom, which is pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Who was it who notified you about that? Some old dude. <laughs> Look at that. So John Ripblatt, who uh, sponsors this uh, Open, had a lesson before this match went on. With you? No. 
Chris Bray, I'm not good enough. Great serve, great serve. And uh, John enjoys lessons because he, he, he feeds the pro by half falling balls at their head for an hour. It's, um, it's very entertaining. Yeah, well, yeah, good help. disguise. John noticeably picking out when Camden's going to do that side while now moving up to volley it. This is a great old court, isn't it? Well, the windows down the right-hand side we did, I want to say, a year and a half to two years ago now. Uh, it's been a welcome addition because we now have natural light during the day and it always used to be blocked out. Does that give you glare in the mornings? Only a little and it's not, not too bad for playing. That's a great shot. Ooh. Brings up set point. Got to be pretty confident on chase two to go for that. Oh, yes. match I marked in this tournament was Zach Edel against Will Flynn. A phenomenal match. 11 I match points didn't he have, Zach? I think it may have been 13. It might have been 11. I think, I think Zach had 11 and Will had 3. And Will had 2. Yeah. two. Okay. Doesn't make such a good story though. Hello, John. I think they stay in the set brilliantly there. And um, the really interesting thing about those 11 or 13 uh, match points to Zach is that I don't think he lost any of them. You know, you know how you can kind of choke and push mm. and stuff like that. You know, he played pretty good tennis in each and every one of them until we'll eventually. Will Flynn, of course, another person making good progress in the tennis world. Oh, yeah. Again, there was a... Well, Mark. There was a moment there where the obvious option for John was to smash the ball on the down from Hazard 2 and he was forced to retreat and chip. That's mm -hmm. the nature of the respect these guys have. So. Yeah, I'll play John. And he's fighting hard. Pretty comfortable volley off the bottom of the grill ledge. <laughs> No, that's, that's outrageous. outrageous. Yep. Again, John picking out the serve, but Cam just, the defense was brilliant. Yep. 
Valerie Duke. Got there at the end. Hmm. Oh. I was going to watch, see exactly. I thought this ball landed a quarter of an inch better than two. Oh, I thought it landed on the line. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's see. have a look. Oh. Here it goes. Yeah, Pretty close. Embarrassing. To Dad's 70. Oh, you. Oh, that's really touching is. the line. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brutal on the markers this streaming, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jury got it absolutely right. Two sets to one to hand it. John's rather lost control of this. He needs to find something. I wish every point was a match point. The tennis you get at the end of a set is just insane. What do you think you'd... Um, I asked this question, you dodged it about ten minutes ago. What, anything you might do if you were John right now? What would I do? Hmm. I think I'd be going for more winners. That's, that's oh, stats maybe on the screen now. Oh yeah. Six dead ons to one. The total disparity in dead ons now is quite marked. Hmm. But only the one who's grilled for Who's counted. serving the most? Not much in it. John's slightly more. It's just that Camden does better at the service end than John does. Yeah. That's a 6 1 set, but even so. But you might put some of that down to. I mean, it's quite hard to hit dead ons against Cam. Yeah, so that's true. I mean, one of the ones John got, he absolutely threaded the needle into Cam's forehand corner, top, top right. Let's give it a look at it. Uh, you're playing the number one player in the world, you know, there's no easy solution here. Uh. You asked me another question which I dodged, which was who's going to win a fifth set if it gets there? Because I think if John does win this set and has the momentum, he probably would be slight favourite. You reckon? I mean, it's got to count somewhere. That's one of the strangest misses I've ever seen Camden do. Yeah, well that, that nice. have heavy four straight for the corner. <laughs> you see, Colin jumped on to give uh, John some hard drugs there. Amazing. Yeah, I got to say, a woefully short serve from John there. Fantastic return from Cam, and John did such a good job digging that out. Got back in the rally. Great finish. Ooh. Yeah, that's a dreadful serve. Yeah. He's told himself that as well. His hands are in the air. Like, what are you doing? Two in the world, get that bobble up there. Mm. 
So Tom Quite appears to be looking for a point to win a grill and then suddenly finds himself 30-15 down. Well, looking John's for father, by the way, Colin, was a very fine player himself. Yeah. Had a world challenge in 1982. Um, How did that work out? Not so good. Mm. He, he lost to Wayne Davies in an eliminator. He was all right then. Oh, he, he, he was a great player. Um, the last gallery. Colin, in his best year, was slightly handicapped by living in Australia at a time when that was disadvantageous. <laughs> John Light Brin has a very short back lift, doesn't he? Doesn't take it. John's going to be annoyed at himself. He could have done more with a two-bounce bobble there. Yeah. Oh, that's a good shot. Not only misread it, read it, but uh, poor footwork by his standards. Yeah, and again, I think that ball might have gone under the grill on the other day, the second one. Oh, look, I see. Camden really oh. looking like he's twinging there. Yeah, he's done something, isn't he? Hazards on the floor, have we? No. Yeah, I'm just wondering, Cam's pulling up a little. Yeah, he wouldn't have given up on that before, would he? limping as he walks. He's having trouble lunging, isn't he? As you say, Cam loses his sideways speed. Great shot. Such little angle to play with. Whoops. Okay, 40 15. That was an interesting return from Camden. Where he's going for the big boost in straight to the corner. He's had a lot of success just absolutely ripping that down on that short bobble. He's kind of shaking his head knowing that he did a bad thing. <laughs>
Both very broad across the shoulders, these guys. Do you think they skipped leg day or not? <laughs> Oof. That came quickly off the timbre, didn't it? 30, 40. bars or something but I just I do feel like there's a number of balls at camps that just go under the grill that used to go in. Second gallery. That's great seven. If John sees it early enough and can actually move out and get his leg to the correct side of the ball he's able to hit that gallery. Yep, there's been another change in momentum, isn't there? <laughs> the counter say you just missed one. Yeah. It's like I don't I don't know he's got that many in it. No. Not compared with Camden's. Just looking at this replay of Camden missing that forehand. That's a great shot there. that target but great finish from John. Mm. Those seven grills each. Yeah John normally elects to intercept those. to defend that. 40, 15. Girls. Just pretend that didn't happen. No, a third of his grills in one game. That was a lead. dead on there but take the label oh that was a tough game cam using the very end of the racket there Gallery. 
Oh, lovely hands. God, that was tough. Yeah, playing it off a half nick. Gosh, that was calm. And he's playing well. He looks so comfortable, doesn't he? That's two great gets from John. And he gets his reward. 15-40. Yeah, that's well played from John. Mm. That floaty ball that passes by the timbre just went under the grill. That's biting down really hard at that pace, that slow pace off the back hall. John did an incredibly good job to get underneath that. Yeah. I was talking to Nino the other day. He was explaining how important it is to, when you're hitting the, the timbre, to hit main wall timbre, because that comes off pretty quickly. If you hit full timbre, the ball's probably going to go into a gallery, as that last one did. Yeah. Cam's melted a couple of forehand volleys off the timbre already today. Sharp from yeah. the centre of the court. Almost got wall timber, not quite. I mean that is a slightly unusual angle for me. I would not have read that, nor did Cam. It's um, John's bobble action. It's a little, a slightly tense affair, wouldn't you say? Let's take a look. Yep. I just feel like he's snatching ever so slightly. Doesn't look comfortable. To a big game. Camden was 40 love up. I'm not sure how much traction John's had with that demi PK because when Cam turns, he's quite hard to read. And as he pointed out earlier, the one perfect one he got got dispatched. So. Mm. Bad bubble again. Yeah. And Queens has classically been quite a good court for the bubble because it slides off the back wall more than many other courts. Just got to get it longer. Yeah, that's a slightly knobbly penthouse over the winning gallery, isn't it? Yeah. First week of my working here, Rob Fay called up, mentioned something else, and he said, When are you going to fix the penthouse? <laughs> Oh. 
I just love watching these guys move. Gives himself so much time. Let's see if he does better with this bobble. It. Oh, great cat. That last one, John left. Mm. Chase about four. I think he probably would have tried for that if there hadn't been one chase down already. But he had to change ends anyway pretty soon, so figured not to risk it. I think he would have tried for it if it was. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <coughs> 15 all, chase better than the door. Great serve. 30, 15, serve up. Worse than four. Mm. 40, 15. John's dealing well with the one bounce for our road, isn't he? Get aggressive return on that. Well, he left the one before and went the nick. A body line one. Forces. Just goes in, in between length, isn't it? Mm. Bearing it across a huge issue. Didn't look comfortable though, did he? Kind of moving to that. Got a little lucky with the length on that one. Certainly did. Mm, John's starting to get some good pace off the back hole on his back end, isn't he? And just dicks this one out. Throwing both arms at it. I feel like John's fast enough to stay on the forehand side of that ball, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he's certainly fast enough. John's got to make that force. 15 love. 15 love. Second gallery. Second gallery is worse than half gallery. 15 love. Gosh, that, that would make one heck of a difference if more of John's forces had crept, gone in. Yeah. Been probably about the biggest single difference, hasn't it? But John does force a lot. It's just, yeah. and as you point out, Camden's pretty good at returning them, or yeah. stopping them. Well, I mean, he, he did two pretty down the centre, and those seem to have more effect. 
second gallery. Up from John there. Yeah. You've got to admire John's temperament, haven't you? He just, just keeps going. I, I would have Doesn't let anything bother him. Left arm for a tenth of that temperament. Second gallery, 30 15. Remorseless. 22 to 7, Daryl. Second gallery, 1315. Thanks. Steve again. I played in the doubles yesterday. Good match against uh, Tim and Cam, playing with John. Both matches yesterday with three sets, but it's great tennis. And uh, it's always fun watching Steve turning on as many balls as he possibly can. It's, uh, Chase the second gallery. Squeezing himself up against the winning gallery to get those railroads. And you invited all the juniors up to watch those doubles. Oh, that's fantastic. You? How many did you get in the end? Bit smelly. Uh, the, well, the, um, the service side galleries were packed with them. Oh, great hit. Oh, that's tough. Most people aren't getting uh, John's first two shots. He wins it seven hits later. That's great. That's what I mean. That stuff just normally happens a little bit more. And it, and it has started to happen now. So there's been two more of those. Interesting, Cam normally looks to cover that. Great shot there. Well, he had 14 years of Rob Fay beating the matter, didn't he? Yeah. Um, Cam got good at that shot very early on. I remember being so surprised when he was getting his. He's just controlling that ball down to the tamper in the crowd. Such an early age. Phenomenal upper body strength. I think we've seen John be much more aggressive on the receiver side for the last few games. Total's pretty close, 113 to 99. <laughs>
face worse than four. Just got on the back foot there, didn't he? Well, he did really well with the extra bounce and the return of serve. Just managed to bring it down, but... That was the problem Rob Fay had with those, that if you try and volley it, you end up volleying it from ankle height. Yeah, but John, John has actually been fast enough to get, to get up on the ball, I think. That was a particularly good one. It was that going was to land about on the line, wasn't and, it? And in fact, it's encouraged one of the only... In fact, I don't think it's even fair to call it an unforced error, but you know, we haven't seen too many straight-up errors from John this match, I wouldn't have said, on that side. So it was a Four very good set. the least row right now. Now that was interesting because that Demi PK uh, was didn't come across the court nearly as much. It ended up in the corner. If you, if you can be consistent with that kind of length and width, that that's gonna actually Yeah I thought he could have volleyed that one. Yeah. But if he's choosing not to Serves in a row that have slightly tied Camden up, I think. Both of which was he wanted to take up the forehand. Good serve. Just out. That's funny, against these lefties, even when you get that almost perfect, they don't look, they don't look too phased, do they? Again. That's very short. Right. Pay the price. I mean, you talk about the forcing making the difference. I reckon that that, that bubbles caused John a lot of trouble. Yeah. Still, he's four three in the third against the world champion. Fourth, even sorry. Another short one. Look at that. Great hands, great anticipation. Great skill all around. Amazing. Cam got a little lucky standing around with one of his backhands down the line, but 
Another well, short one. Yep, you're right. The serving hasn't been up to the mark. Camden had to do a great shot off the town to stand that rally. A couple of really tough trees from the backhand side. It's a shame the confidence of which she nailed that main wall timbre volley was just fantastic. It's a shame to make the error there. Great intensity, John. Oh, wow. That kept low, didn't it? Yeah. Who made that one? But what great work again from John. Just really his footwork was fantastic in that rally. So he kind of made a few check steps. Tiny alterations for each and every shot. He really does look like he could run forever, doesn't he? He does. I was starting to wonder uh, about four or five games ago, he's a little slow to get into the forehand corner when Camden did something unusual, but it doesn't you can't see it now. Pushing hard. Worse than two. Worse than two. It says one and two on the screen, but the chase is worse than two. There it is. I think that Demi PK is getting him in the points now. Forehand. Well, again, very rare racket error. For yeah, under a lot of pressure, but even so, two backhands in a row he's missed. Great serve when you need it. Let's have a look at the length of this bobble. Again, that was set up by the poor bubble, yep. wasn't it? Yep. Yep. 
such an easy fix, I don't know why it doesn't do it. To be honest, I'm slightly surprised Cam's going for the big fat boast when his cut volley into John's final corner is so good. But even so, that bubble was, was worse than the one before. Yeah. And uh, is there something about the action that looks incredibly tense across the shoulders and tight? And um, I feel like he's, he's snatching at it. And that, you know, that four all in the fourth, that's, that's enough to make a but change, match. Server leads 40 15, chase two. <coughs> so Cam is one, one game away from winning yet another British Open title. Yeah, Camden's pulled out that full PK a few Every times. Every time there's a short chase, yeah. yeah. Incredible scrambling by John, but he had one big opportunity yeah. there, didn't he? It's excruciating to him work so hard for the points and get get the option for the naval force and miss it. Great catch. I actually quite like John's semi-cut straight force for the top right-hand corner. He doesn't. He doesn't roll out like a lot of the top players do. He, he kind of slots it. Uh, Rob does a similar thing on railroads that pop high. He kind of uh, slots it down. They used to do the same thing. You wouldn't necessarily generate so much pace, but you. But you get the disguise. Yeah. But I think it's a really good shot of John's. In fact, I don't know that he's missed it. Well, this is the moment of truth. I think he was lucky to get away with that. Serve was a bit loose. Chase the second gallery. Four thirty fifty. Crazy good shot from Cam. Now that was called a stroke. That's game and match. Oh. 
Well, that caught us all by surprise. Yeah. I well, hats off to these two guys. They, oh. were, they were great. I mean, I, I'm assuming that John called, called the stroke on himself. Yeah. Which is why uh, Drew reversed it. Yeah. Uh, we didn't catch that. So, I mean, that was a tight match. We've just seen a, a great final here. Played in the best, best sporting spirit. Well done. We're going to see this many times to come over the next few years. These two. Hope you all had fun watching that. Thanks to yeah. Dad for coming along and helping out with the commentary here. Yeah, it's been a great pleasure. A privilege. A privilege. And uh, we'll move now to the presentation ceremony. And I'll say goodnight. To John. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what a match uh, we have seen tonight. Uh, well, we have our new British Open champion, uh, Camden Riviere, defending his title. Uh, as we await the presentations, I'm about to be joined up here in the commentary booth uh, by uh, Mr. Giles Doy. Uh, Giles, what do you think of that? Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, fa absolutely fantastic tennis, mate. Kind of felt like a, a match that kind of uh, kind of had a lot. I think there was a lot to be uh, a lot to be said about the um, about some of the energy and uh, momentum that Camden gets from other people when he's on and when he's around the court. I think we definitely saw a few bits and pieces uh, when Camden was getting quite frustrated with the marker, quite frustrated maybe with some of the spectators, uh, maybe some of the shots that, that uh, uh, Camden was playing, maybe not quite getting the kind of respect that uh, maybe Camden was appreciating. Um, and we saw a, a great fight back from, from, from John in that, in that second set, and, and certainly in that fourth set as well. Um, really a set that, that could have gone, uh, gone either way, really. Yeah, we saw a, a couple of delays um, uh, where the, the, the marker was trying to remember the score um, and there's a bit of an argument uh, between the two players um, and we we're saying up in the commentary box that in the past um, that kind of disruption has really um, negatively impacted um, Cam's play but today he really came out uh, firing after those interruptions we had another earlier interruption where the court was cleaned mm. uh, and he looked after those interruptions the better player by far yep. he came out he used that anger I think we hit uh, 10 dead-ons uh, in that second set. Uh, which Let's have a look at some of those um, match statistics now, uh, just while we await the, the presentations. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think the kind of style of play that we've been... Uh, kind of style of play that we've been seeing from Camden throughout this tournament uh, very much kind of repeated and reflecting themselves in... Uh, in the final as well, it, it's it's quite an uncamden-like thing to be uh, kind of consistently consistently aiming for, consistently seeking targets. Um, normally, Camden will, will fancy his chances to beat players on the floor, to be able to um, uh, you know to find the gaps, to find the holes. But but if you look, you know, looking at some of the numbers here, 23 dead on um, is. Is, is very peculiar. Isn't it? It's really not so kind of statistic that you expect to see from Cam. No, you'd, you'd much more expect it to see from Rob. That's yeah, the kind 100%. of the numbers that Rob would post out. Yeah. You won't really think of Cam as a target hitter, but he really brought out that force today, mm. both off the main wall and straight. Yeah, yeah, ab ab absolutely. And I think what, what we also saw just on the targets bit as well. I think Camden. He, s I, I felt that he was certainly using a lot more grills to get himself out of a hole down the service end. I think you know we'd find um, you can probably go back through the data and kind of see where um, where all those grills uh, took place. You're going to find a lot of them are going to happen in quite quick succession. Yes, um, there was one game where John hit three grills in a row. Yeah, um, and that was half of his grill count by that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, quite quite curious and quite quite uh, quite quite peculiar in that kind of way. Um, and I think one of the things it does do is it. Um, 
we've seen, we saw in the, the World Championships back in September um, that uh, John was able to, to be up there and challenge Cam really for the first time that anyone's been able to do that since in the last decade uh, for someone mm. not named Rob Fay. Yep. And I think we yep. saw that again tonight. And I think these matches are only going to get closer and closer um, over the next two years uh, as we see them uh, battling out in, in more open titles and, and tournaments like, like the US Pro. Yeah, and I think if you, you know, particularly if you see how that fourth set, uh, that fourth set was, was much, much closer um, than, uh, much, much closer than I think the 6 4 scoreline really kind of suggests or, or indicates there. Um, so I, I don't think it was that long ago where the assumption was that Cam would just win uh, a final three sets to love. Yeah. I think he really had to work for it tonight. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of emotion on court. Mm. Yes, the two of them are, are really good friends off court. Um, but as, you, uh, as, they, as Cam said to me uh, in the interview earlier this week, uh, when he's playing his close friends like John Lumley uh, or, or Tim Chisholm, uh, they really make sure... Uh, that uh, whatever happens on court stays on court and yep. they'll be friends and they'll be joking around afterwards. Yeah, and I, I think we saw right at the end uh, right, right, right at the end of that match we saw some, uh, some lovely gestures and I'm, I'm hoping some very kind words between the two players as they, uh, uh, as they, as they shook hands uh, and shook hands with Drew. Uh, to, uh Looks like we're going to um, have uh, TNRA chairperson Fred Sato leading us off. Ladies on. and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? C can you hear me? <coughs> Trevor, we'll come closer if you can't hear. Yeah, and I'll hold it closer. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. My name is Fred Sato, and I'm chairman of the Tennis and Rackets Association. I'm very grateful to have you here tonight. We've seen some fantastic tennis, some wonderful retrieving and forcing from the world champion and his challenger, John Lumley, Camden Riviere. But this tournament does not happen without a lot of hard work from a lot of people over many months, and I'd like to thank a few of them now. First of all, I'd like to thank Queen's Club, its board, its chairman, Simon Greenwell, who's here tonight and has just started playing real tennis. Uh, its staff and members for allowing us to host this tournament. Secondly, I'd like to thank Ben Ronson, who's head pro at Queen's Club, and all the other pro, uh, real tennis pros here, uh, Bryn Sayers and Neil McKenzie. Uh, Thank you, Ben. Ben has personally sown all 300 balls or so uh, for this tournament and has also done all the marking. Talking of marking, I'd like to thank Drew Lyons for marking this evening's game and many others, and also all the other players and professionals who've marked games over the last 10 days. Jess Garsight has spared some time from running the Football League to organize stewarding and ticketing, helped by her mother, Alex. Thank you very much, Jess. <laughs> Alistair Lumsden has been tournament organizer for many, many years and once again has organized the tournament impeccably. He's had to deal with sweating courts, lights going out, midpoint at 10.30, withdrawals, and everything else. But, but thank you very much, Alistair. <laughs> now, some of you who, who may not have seen it live may have watched it streaming. I'd like to thank Ben Gatenbeck and Jackie Sue and all the other commentators and helpers for such wonderful streaming this year, which seems to have been even better than last year. So thank you very much. Yeah. 
And I'd also like to thank Carolina, Diego, and the TRA office for their hard work over the last 10 days. It's a very busy time of year for them, so please thank them as well. Most importantly, I'd like to thank Sir John Ripblatt, who's the lead sponsor of, of this tournament and has been in many different guises over many, many years. Frankly, this tournament would not happen without Sir John's generosity. So very thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are two other sponsors I'd like to, to thank. Um, Saracen and Partners manage uh, half of the TRA's investments and have done very well in diff difficult times. I'd like to thank them. And also Paul Roger, whose wonderful champagne and wines we're lucky to taste so often. So please thank them as well. And now I'd like to hand over to Sir John to present the prizes. Right. Fred, you've left me nothing to do. <laughs> what a super match, wasn't it? How lovely to see the floor game, and how lovely to imagine our retrieving, like our two protagonists. What a treat. You know, I was also thinking, isn't it a shame that we've got a wonderfully select audience, but why can't we get more in? You see that wall? We want it down, Davis. <laughs> we want a big glass wall here. And then we would have a huge audience. And it is a shame, but we are streaming, as Fred says. And it comes, it's not bad on television. Better than the rackets, anyway. And certainly better than the squash. But the most important thing is the players. What a fantastic game it was. An illustration that makes ordinary tennis, if you'll excuse me, look really silly. This, this is a marvelous game, isn't it? It's not dominated by the service, uh, the agility of the players. In the past, I've sometimes had people like Sampras on the court. They can't do it. It's really interesting. Anyway, it's a joy for me to do this. I don't know how many years I've done it all in all in all, but quite enough, really. I would quite like to retire and save a few quid. <laughs> and save a few quid. I've said enough. Thank you very much, everybody. And on with the motley. Let's get on with the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> What are they? Andrew Lyons? Marker? Yeah. Marker's coming up. Andrew. <laughs> Come on. Uh -oh. Thanks, John. <laughs> 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 um. Is this? John London. Ah, John, where are you? Well Thank done again. Much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was a lovely I match. appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, look at this. Oh, I like it. Well, you might have to oh, well, I don't get, I don't get to keep this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. this one. Yes, that's, that one. that's the keep. Nice and that's the drink. <laughs> Can you manage? Or we'll give it to you afterwards, whichever you like. Yeah. Would you like to say something? Yeah, I'd love to. Lovely. Um, Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Sir John Blatt and the sponsors for uh, supporting us. Without them, this event wouldn't go ahead, and it was a pleasure to play in front of you tonight, and hopefully uh, you enjoyed the, uh, enjoyed the match. Um, I'd like to thank the Racquet Club of Philadelphia uh, for allowing me to continue to chase my dreams and um, take a ton of work, uh, a ton of time off work. Uh, they just had the Jimmy done, which is the busi busiest uh, tournament on our calendar. So, Robbie and the team back there, thank you so much for uh, letting me come here and try and take down Camden. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, Alistair. He was, I think, sat in that chair every second of my matches, and I'm sure every other match, and it's been a, a tough one this year, but you, you handled it. Um, so thank you for, for all your work. Um, I think every year Ben gets better and better with the streaming, uh, so I'd like to thank him and his team for, for all the hard work they do. <laughs> Again, they support me coming over here, and I really appreciate it. 
um, to my fam for being here as well, not missing any a single point uh, that to play in front of you. So thank you for continuing to cheer for me. Um, and lastly, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Camden. Uh, great match, buddy. Well played. And uh, <laughs> I'm still coming for you. So until <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time. But thank you. Very good. Thank you. Jolly nice. Yeah. Okay. What do we call this? I don't know what. Camden. <laughs> Come on. Step up to the plate. <laughs> Congratulations. You're a star. Oh, you are a star. And uh, it, was, it was a lovely one. Oh, thank you. Really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I got it. I think I got it. Um, it's, I'd say the hardest part about this is that the thank yous have kind of been, been pretty thorough. And uh, amongst all the other things John and I talk about when we train, it's how to, how to represent yourself well and give good speeches. And then he goes ahead and t thanks everybody ahead of time. So I don't have anything left. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out. It's, it's very unique, this game, to get to play uh, one of your closest friends. Uh, and John and I have obviously been able to do that a lot lately. And it's, uh, it's pretty funny because to me tonight when I walked out here is very much like one of our, our training matches in Philly. We just happen to have a lot more people watching us and, uh, you know, especially at home. But it's, uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to see how well you're, you're playing at the moment and how much you've improved last year. Uh, it's been to be on the journey with you. Um, not going to lie. But I'm just, uh, it's, it's great, for, great to see you playing well. It's great for the game. I know obviously not the result you wanted tonight, but genuinely it's, uh, it's just great to have you here and to, to get to play with you. So thank you, man. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank John and, and all the other sponsors of the event. Without you guys, we, we wouldn't have this. You know, we wouldn't be here. And, uh, you know, the British Open is, I believe, the longest running Open we have in our, in our game. And the last thing we'd want to ever see is that not happen. So we appreciate your support. Uh, we'd love as much as more. And everybody, you know, talk to your friends. We always want more. And thank you to everybody in the U.S. I don't think uh, people realize, you know, we're taking 10 days off to come over here. Uh, 10 days off of work. That's, most of us work at clubs. That means time away from the clubs. That means other pros have to step up on our behalf. Uh, as well as a lot of other people uh, around the world. So even though we're the ones here playing and, and kind of playing in these finals and getting trophies and things, there's a lot of people behind the scenes back home that have allowed us and helped us to be here. So I want to say a big thank you to, to everybody back in the States that's been a part of this, for, for everybody involved. Two more quick thank yous, and then, then we'll get to popping the champagne and the fun side of all of this. Uh, but I want to th thank the hosts, uh, specifically for me, the Greenleys, who have put me up this year, but to any host uh, who's been putting up players this year and has in the past. Uh, it's, it's so wonderful. It's so nice to get to meet you guys and spend time with you and get to know you. And hopefully you enjoy getting to know us. I've been lucky enough to make some lifelong friends over the years just by happening to stay at their houses to meet them. So we love it when you open our do your doors to us. Hopefully we aren't too big of a pain, but uh, thank you guys for having us. Um, and then just one final thank you, um, and I don't think she gets thanked enough. Uh, Susie Faulkner, I've been able to spend quite a bit of time with her over the last year, especially dealing with world championship things. Uh, she does so much for the game behind the scenes. Pro, amateur, everything. I don't think you guys realize just how involved she is in real tennis. And without her, we none of us would be here. None of the players. We wouldn't have events like this. We wouldn't be nearly as organized. And Susie, you never get the. You never get it. Keep the camera on. I'd like to give her a huge round of applause for everything. She does.
I don't want to speak for the sponsors and everybody, but we do have the doubles final tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Uh, Tim Chitton and myself against Nick Howell and, and some other guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the one and only Rob Fay is, uh, is back on court and yet another, I think it's his like 42nd British Open doubles final. Uh, so if you if you haven't signed up for tickets, or there, there might be some still available, uh, but please come out. It'll be just like this, but with four of us. So uh, thank you all very much. <laughs> Well, just as Cam says there, we do have more tennis for you coming up uh, tomorrow uh, evening at 6 p.m. Uh, we have the, the doubles uh, final. Uh, I don't think Cam could have previewed it better than us. Um, he said he said everything we we have everything that that's needed to be said. Cam Cam de Riviere and Tim Chisholm uh, coming up against Rob Fay and Nick Howe. Uh, as Camden said, there are still tickets going. Uh, through the Tennis and Rackets website, tennisandrackets.com, uh, to uh, go grab your tickets there. Uh, the show starts, uh, show starts at 6 p.m. UK time. Uh, from all of us uh, here at the Queen's Club, uh, we thank you very much for joining us this evening, and we hope to see you tomorrow night uh, and through the other events throughout the year. Uh, signing off. Great. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>